and welcome back I want to do a another quick video show the status of where we're at with our charging we've made it up to batteries four and five in our row that you can see here we, we've been working backwards uh, from cell 16 on up we've got uh, cells four and five on charge uh, it should get done later this evening and then tomorrow we'll start working on the final three for this particular pack and back here in our original four that we're going to do our load testing with they've been in parallel now for about two days uh, we'll get these in a series configuration and then we'll get the uh, load test set up to go from there and it'll be four of these in series that'll give us nominal 12 volts uh, and we've got a, a 12 volt inverter as a matter of fact, the first inverter that we used to use with our house. And like I said, we'll get a nice load test going on that and kind of see the capacity of these. Now, with that being said, again, we are charging our, our cells to 3.5 volts, not 3.65. Uh, I may bring these up to 3.65 just for the test. Not sure yet, but uh, 3.65 versus 3.5 the amount of capacity is is I don't want to say a little a uh, little or nominal but um, in the grand scheme of things it's uh, not that much capacity lost to stop at 3.5 versus 3.65 uh, and if you watch the off-grid garage he has got a quite a few videos in his series where he charges up his 280 amp cells uh, I should say not 280 amp cells, but he has a 100 amp hour test cell that he's been using where he's been charging it to 3.45, 3.5, 3.65 and doing the capacity testing showing that when you take a battery to a certain state of charge and then you discharge it, you know, what, what is your capacity if you only go to 3.4 or 3.5? But like I said, if we decide to take these up to 3.65, I will, or I may leave them 3.5 for the test. Uh, either way, I'll let you know at the beginning of that video. But you'll notice we've got our positive bus bar set in parallel for these four. And But the negative bus bar, we only have these two cells hooked together and these two cells hooked together. The final bridge between all four got a set of alligator clips on it. That is because those alligator clips run to a set of test probes which eventually make its way to a, a fluke meter, a fluke 117 where the positive lead is in current mode, current measuring mode right now. We're in amps DC. And as you can see, we're fluctuating between one and two milliamps after making that final connection. Now, what we did prior is that we hooked our positive leads together. Then we amped between these two, took a reading, amped between these two, amped between these two and then we did between these two and these two kind of individually all around this pack and what I like to do there is the reason why I'm doing that is I'm just making sure that from a state of charge perspective there isn't a massive amount of current flow between any two cell before dropping the bus bar in place now, I've seen other techniques where you can tap a bus bar between the terminals as long as there's no big spark. That means very little current, current flowing, so you should be safe to drop a bar in there. I like to use a meter just to make doubly sure because last thing that you want to do, or last thing I should say I want to do or I think anybody would want to do, is if you get things mixed up and let's say you have a battery here at a top state of charge completely full, and you have one here that's completely dead because again voltage is not a good determination on the state of charge so maybe you're doing a voltage reading you think because of the voltage reading that you got a good cell and a good cell and maybe what we really have is a good and a bad and if you touch that bus bar on there you're going to make a pretty good spark because there's going to be a pretty good transfer of current between the stronger battery and the weaker battery and which is why some individuals say you can kind of tap a bus bar on there and if it sparks real good then you know you've got an issue me I prefer to use the meter because it does have a internal 10 amp fuse that can break the the current that one of these batteries can put out 
or I should say cell, not battery. Go ahead, ask me how I know that. I've had to replace that fuse. That gives you any indication, and I'll explain why. But uh, as long as I see something lower than 100 milliamps, when I put my meter between these two cells, or these two, or these two, or a combination of the two, then I'll go ahead and drop the bus bar in. Anything higher than 100 milliamps or more, then I will run a charger on a cell or a group of, or, a, or multiple cells if needed to make sure those cells are as close to as charged as I can get them. And again, that's just my threshold. And usually the last connection that you see here, I'll leave it going through the meter just so I can kind of keep an eyeball on where it's at. Now granted, that just tells me kind of what's going on between this bridge here, but it does give you a little bit of indication of kind of what's flowing across this link and what's possibly flowing across this link and then making this final connection. Now, this meter did start about 20 milliamps and over the last couple of days, as you can see, it's pretty much down to one, one to two milliamps now, which means these four are pretty much spot on top balanced with each other. Now, one thing I will say, that if you're gonna be using your meter in amp mode like this, most meters all do this, but you'll notice when you have to go into current mode, you'll notice, I don't know if you remember, when I first woke this meter up, it's flashed the word lead. What that is, that's telling you that if you're going to be in current mode, that you have to take the positive lead out of this spot, which is meant for voltage and continuity and just the kind of the daily use of the meter, I would call it, and move it over here. To where you see that little mark that says 10 amp fused this is your current side when you are done using your meter to measure current remember to move to disconnect your leads make sure they're disconnected turn the meter off take this lead move it back to the voltage position but make sure the lead is disconnected from the source you are measuring first meters off put it back in the voltage position why if you do not and I'm sure there's many of us that have done this I've even done this if you leave this over here and you flip this to voltage and you're thinking you're ready to go because you're going to measure a battery what this is is this is will pretty much almost be a dead short if you try to measure measure across the battery in voltage because remember there is a basically a current sense circuit in here that the meter is using to give you an amperage, which it is fuse protected, but if you forget to move this, it is almost like dead shorting a battery. And you will have a very bad day. But again, remember, and I, I'll say this in time and time again, when you are done using a meter for measuring current, and if it's one of these meters that you had to move this lead over here, remember, Disconnect your leads from your source, turn your meter off, move this lead back over to your voltage side. And yes, you don't see me wearing gloves, but uh, and I should be, so that's a, that's a ding on me. But I'm just kind of pointing for illustration purposes here. I'm not actually you know, working with the batteries today, just monitoring the charging. And what I what we also did was that we did a time lapse video of about five and a half hours that these cells are taking on average per cell to charge. Uh, I've got that sped up to about 64 times normal speed. So, and I will add it to the end of this video. So, if you've never seen kind of one of these eye chargers uh, do its thing, you'll see the set voltage down here where it says voltage sense. You'll see that hit our 3.5 set point, and then you'll slowly start to see this current ramp down. And when it gets down to about 2 amps, which is the cutoff, then it'll say that the it's done and complete done and completed charging this particular cell. But I'll paste that in there. Maybe you'll find it informative. Maybe you won't. But uh, in case you've never seen that process before, uh, we figured we'd play around with the uh, uh, time lapse on the camera. And, see if we can give it a go. But other than that, uh, 
We'll let you go and we'll bring you back in a bit. <laughs> 